Hey everyone, my name is Kanaya Gupta and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss a very beautiful topic, recursion. But before moving ahead, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and click the bell icon so that you don't miss any update. Let's start. Recursion. What is recursion? Guys, before I tell you the theoretical definition of recursion, I would like you to solve this problem. Can you calculate the value of NC1? I'll request you to pause this video here and try to solve this problem. It will not take much time, it hardly take few seconds to solve this problem. If you have done it, just resume this video and go ahead. If I were at your place, this is how I solve this problem. I will expand nc1 equals to factorial n upon factorial n minus 1 into factorial 1. I have used this formula, guys. To express nc1. Now, how I will simplify this? I will expand factorial n to n into n minus 1 factorial so that I can cancel out the factorial n minus 1. And now, the finally, if you divide n by 1, the answer will be n. So, finally, I have solved this problem. So, nc1 is equivalent to n. Did you notice, guys, something here? What I have done? So here I have expressed factorial n into n into factorial n minus 1. Because I know if I express the factorial n in terms of factorial n minus 1, it will be easy for me to solve this problem. So this is how the recursion work guys. In the similar way, you will find a lot more problems in the programming where recursive solution will be much more easy than the iterative one. And you will choose the recursive approach over iterative. So this is how the recursion will help you. So here you notice I have also expressed factorial n in terms of factorial n minus 1. This is nothing just a recursion. I know right now it is very hard for you to see where is recursion but I will show you sometime. It will not be wrong if I will write this statement in a generic form something like this. fn equals to n into fn minus 1. So here you are expressing fn in terms of fn minus 1. So basically this is a recurrence relation to find the factorial of a number. So here I am expressing fn in terms of fn minus 1. So in the similar way, now you want to know the value of fn minus 1, you can express in the similar way. If you express the value of fn minus 1, you will get n minus 1 into fn minus 2. So in the similar way, you can express the fn minus 2 in terms of another smaller function. But how long you will keep on doing this thing? There will be infinite loop. To avoid that infinite loop, you should know something. You should know where to terminate this. Otherwise, you will keep on doing this thing again and again and again. So there should be something which will terminate this. That is called base case. So what we know about this factorial, we know the factorial of 1 is equivalent to 1. So it means if we are keep on doing these things, you will reach up to that place where you need to finally calculate the value of factorial 1. And you know the value of the factorial 1 is equivalent to 1. Here you don't need to express the factorial 1 into another recursive function. Otherwise it will be infinite. So to avoid that infinite loop, there should be some terminating condition, also known as the base case. So in our example, f of 1 equals to 1 is the base case. So let me remove all those stuff and we will talk about only these two. So this is a recursive function to calculate the factorial of a number and this is our base case. So let me club these two things and write the mathematical definition something like this. A function n is equivalent to n into function n minus 1 if n is greater than 1. A function n is equivalent to 1 if n equals to 1. So this is the mathematical definition of this function guys. If you want to calculate the factorial of a number, you can use this function. Here upper one n into f n minus 1 is called recursive case where the function performs some task and delegate rest of the task to its recursive call. 
So this is the request case, and this is the base case, also known as the terminating condition. This is very important, guys. Every cursive function must have a base case, otherwise you will end up in an infinite loop because there is no way to come out of the recursion. So there should be some terminating condition or base case which will help you to come out of the recursion. Now I hope guys you got some idea or terminology about the recursion. Let's see some theoretical aspect. What is recursion? When a function calls itself directly or indirectly, it is called recursive function, and the process is called recursion. This is the definition which we all study in the programming, or in other terms, we can say recursion is a powerful problem-solving technique where solution of a larger problem defined in terms of smaller instances of itself. Give me some time. I'll justify both the statement in front of. Me. But before that, let's have a look. We all know sigma n is nothing. It is called summation of natural number up to n. Or in other words, we can say sigma n equals to one plus two plus three plus four dot 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 up to n. If summation of n equals to a summation of natural number up to n, then summation of n minus one Will be equivalent to summation of up to n minus one. Let's mark this equation number one and this equation as number two. Based on that, can we break down the sigma n in terms of two parts? Where first one will be one plus two will go up to n minus one plus n, and this expression can be replaced with the equation two. So sigma n plus two, sigma n minus one plus n. So here we have expressed sigma n in terms of sigma n minus one, or we can write a mathematical definition of this function something like this. If n is greater than one, we can compute the sigma n using this function, or if n is equal to one, the sigma n value will be one. So this is the mathematical definition of this function, and the same. In the programming world, we can write it something like this: We have sum of n equals to sum of n minus one plus n if n is greater than one, and if n equals to one, return one, which we have seen. This is our base case. Now let me justify the these two problem statement. When a function calls itself directly or indirectly, it is called recursive function, and the process is called recursion. Now let's come to the second statement. Recursion is a powerful problem-solving technique where the solution of larger problem defined in terms of smaller instances of itself. I hope guys now you are able to relate what recursion is and what is the recursive function. Let's talk about few points which you must know about the recursion. I'll use the same function guys as an example. Recursion always have terminating condition. Also known as its base case to avoid infinite loop. So in this example, if the sum function if n equals to one, then return one and terminate the recursion. So you can see guys here, the highlighted one is the terminating condition or base case. The second point, recursion function perform some part of the task and delegate the rest of it to its recursive call for further processing. So in this example, the function performs addition of n with return value of the sum n minus one, but delegate the computation of sum n minus one to its recursive call, which is highlighted here. So these are the two main points which you must know about the recursion. Let's talk about the application of recursion. Application of recursion. Here is the list of algorithm which uses recursion technique to solve their problem. Fibonacci series. Factorial finding, which we have just seen, guys. Merge sort, quick sort, binary search, a famous problem, Tower of Hanoi, tree traversal, and problem based on it. Guys, tree is a recursive data structure, so most of the problem you will solve by using recursion. Graph traversals, DFS and BFS, divide and conquer algorithm, backtracking, and dynamic programming. Couple of guys, maybe you have seen my dynamic programming tutorial. So here you can see yourself 
how the recursion play a very bigger role over there these are the couple of application guys guys there are a lot more to talk about the recursion so let me know in the comment section if you have enjoyed this tutorial and want me to cover more on this topic but before ending this tutorial let's do some quick exercise guys so this is the problem statement given an array of integers write a recursive function to sum of all the previous numbers to each index of the array i know guys it's not clear so we'll see some input guys so this is the input array and the output of this problem will be this where each index hold the summation till that index so what i want you guys to answer this problem in the comment section and write a recursive function to solve this problem the format of writing the function will be something like this this is just an example guys where fn equals to n into fn minus 1 recursive case and f1 equals to 1 which is a base case so i want you to write the recursive and base case in the comment section and if there are more people who are interested we'll talk more about this in the next lecture thanks for watching guys